everybody. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Rising Tide Leadership Podcast. We have a great show in store for you today. So whether you are listening to this podcast or you are watching us on YouTube, we encourage you to download the show notes and follow along if you can. My name is Amber Jordan, and I'm here with Dr. Michael David Morales, aka Mo. Mo, how's it going today? Hey, what's going on, Amber? Doing really well. Uh, Excited to talk about leadership. So let's do it. Well, we have titled this episode, Principles of Leading Up. And Michael Yuseem, who's the author of Leading Up, How to Lead Your Boss So You Both Win, says, sometimes those above you just don't yet see what must be done. And your calling is to spark their attention and move them along a course of change before it is too late. So we're going to talk about that today. And leaders, if you're out there and you are in a situation or, you know, you've been in a situation or honestly, someday you might find yourself in a situation where you're working for somebody that you think just needs to see a little further into the future or um, maybe needs some help at seeing which direction to go or the, to be productive in the things that need to be done. Um, this is going to be a great episode for you because, Mo, I know that in your coaching clients, you talk a lot about this and there are so many principles to leading up. It's really kind of a vast topic, but we decided that we're going to try to narrow it down to really the three basic principles today. So why don't you start us off and tell us what is the first basic principle of learning to lead up? Yeah, you got it. And this really is such a rich subject. And so leaders, don't be discouraged out there. If you have a boss, which we all do, just make sure that you kind of take these things under advisement. And again, like Amber said, these aren't the only things that you got to worry about. There's a ton out there. And um, but if you start here, I think this will be a good place. So the the first one today uh, that I want to talk about is this. The first point is leaders look at themselves first. And so wherever you're at in your organization, I guess I could sum it up this way. And it's most simplified form. It would be to say that your attitude matters pretty much more than anything else when you're talking about leadership or life in general, right? And so we've done a little bit on attitude in previous podcasts, and we'll probably do several more. The reason being is that attitude is seriously the most important thing that you could work on on yourself Uh, if you want to be a person of influence, but thoughts and actions matter and your thoughts are going to influence your actions, even if you don't think that they're going to. And, you know, even sometimes when you're thinking, you know, I I really need to understand the, how do I really feel? How do people around me really feel? So based on this point for today, we really want to encourage our leaders out there to look at themselves before they look at others, including their supervisors or their bosses, right? So it's really easy to point the finger and say things that are going wrong in the organization. Um, And if you're listening to this podcast, chances are that everything in your organization isn't perfect. It's not going exactly how you would like it to go or think that it should go. And you're probably and you're probably correct in, in some ways. Yeah. And, uh, and some things probably are not going as bad as you think they're going to. Um, But either way, it's something that we have to figure out how to hash out. And so how do you do that? Yeah. I want to be the person on the team who knows my blind spots, which is why I always talk about the inner circle, right? It's easy to point out other people's blind spots, but you need to look at your own blind spots First, And I make sure that there are men and women in my life to speak to my strengths and my weaknesses and put me in the best position to win and help the team win. So individually and as a team, it's really important. So do you look at yourself introspectively uh, uh, first? And if you do that, you know, uh, when you think you're doing everything right and everything else around you is messed up, then that really just puts you in a myopic uh, understanding of what you're doing. And you probably need to check your attitude. But I have weekly conversations with people in my life, both in my sphere of influence and outside of my sphere of influence to help me make sure that I'm not just thinking that I'm doing everything right and that everybody else is doing things wrong. So what what do you mean by making sure that you're doing everything right? So there's 
you know, you want to make sure you're doing stuff right, but is there a wrong way to do stuff right? <laughs> There's not really a right or wrong way to do it necessarily. But, you know, what I do is I ask my my coaches and mentors, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them a situation. I'll tell them who's involved. I'll tell them, you know, where we are and what happened. I'll try to set it up. And then I just ask them, you know, are there certain things that I could have handled differently? Are there things that I could have done better? What did I get right? What should I capitalize on uh, next time? And if you do this more often and you start thinking of yourself, kind of like, it's kind of like watching game film the day after and saying, did I do this right? Well, you're never going to watch game film all by yourself. If you're in sports, you're going to have other people look at it with you and say, look at, did you see how you, you, you didn't do that in this, in this situation and, and you need to do this more same thing in life. So you need people to ask you hard questions. You need people to challenge you, to challenge your perception on any given situation. So look inward first, fix yourself first and fix your attitude. <laughs> And then you can go out and try to fix the rest of the world. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. Which, which actually leads me, Amber, then um, to my second point, which is this. You know, leaders, we lighten the load for others. Leaders lighten the load of others. Remember this very important principle. When your boss wins, you're going to win because the organization is probably going in a better direction, right? But conversely, if you don't help your boss when the entire organization is going to feel it and, and when they feel those pains, you're going to feel those pains trickle down, right? <laughs> because you don't want your boss to get fired because that means you're probably going to get fired too, right? I mean, th these things don't happen in a vacuum. It's going to affect everybody. So why just not try to, to help out the situation the best you can? And so you can lighten the load. And if you really want to put the team first, it's important for you to lighten that load for others especially your boss, whatever they need from you, do it. It's probably not exactly everything that you want to do, right? But it will help you and the entire organization in the end. Well, this feels a little different than our usual perspective, because I know usually we're talking about it's the responsibility of the leader or the boss to lighten the load for those that work under them. But here it sounds like you're saying it's really our responsibility to lighten the load for those that are above us as well. Absolutely. And, and I'm not saying that you need to let your boss shirk his or her responsibilities at all. They still have responsibilities and they have to answer for the things that they need to do and they should do that. But I don't control that. You don't control that. Right. And so, you know, what I think about is what are my, what are my boss's goals? What are my supervisor's goals? The problem for most of us in the workforce is that we get so tied up in what we're trying to accomplish in our little spot in the world, what our goals are, that we start to forget what are the goals of our boss? Because they have goals as well. Remember, they have somebody who they have to answer to, likely, right? And, and that means that if you have clarity in what you want to accomplish and what they need to accomplish, it's going to make your job easier. And so, you know, you have to understand goals. <clears throat> you have to understand numbers. You have to understand projects, all these things that your boss is, is accountable for. If you start there, then you have something to work. You, you'll have some to work from. So something that's really important to always ask is for your direct supervisor's input, right? We talk about input all the time. And if you're aware of what your boss's goals and priorities are, you're probably going to be able to support them. So ask. And remember, great leaders ask great questions. And if I found that there were, you know, uh, more questions that I needed to ask, I do it because the more questions that I ask, the better position I put myself in to be successful. So if you understand your boss's goals, you'll be able to deliver and support to whatever those needs of those goals are to accomplish the bigger picture. Now, Amber, uh, you, you know that there's things, you know, in life, right. That are spoken and unspoken. Right. I mean, you're a mom, like there's things that we say and there's things we don't. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, sure. so let, let, let me tell you this great story. I love this one. So in the army, there's an unspoken, but sometimes spoken, depending on where you're at, an unspoken rule that we live by. And to sum it up, it says this, it says, you don't want to let your boss be blindsided. Your boss does not like surprises in the army. Surprises are a bad thing in, in the military, <laughs> especially the negative ones, right? And so as a chaplain in the military, I have usually one boss and one boss only, meaning um, whoever the commander is, that is the man or woman that I am responsible to. That's the person that I go to, and they're the ones that I have to deliver 
whatever information they need from me, right? So when my commander hears something, especially bad news, that involves my sphere of influence, I want him or her to already have heard it from me. <laughs> I remember this happened when I was uh, deployed recently. There was something that happened and there was information that kind of trickled down from, I'm talking the top, top, and it was going to eventually reach my boss. I just happened to get it first. And the tough part is that I knew that my boss was going to have questions for me. Like my commander, he was going to have questions for me, which means that I needed to get in front of it. So what I did, it, it, and I thought it was the right thing to do, and I actually talked to my mentors about this afterwards and found out it was, it was good, is I sent a direct message right to my boss, right? And you don't really want to want to send a direct message to the boss unless it's like really important. And in this case it was, and I did. And I made sure that he knew that there was some information that was coming his way. And I was said, Hey, sir, are you aware of X, Y, and Z? And he said, you know what he had to say. And then we kind of got off, off the phone and it, it was great. So trust me, that's going to go a long way. <laughs> the bad thing would have been if I got a call from him that said, Hey chap, what's going on? Ooh, that's the call you don't want, right? If, if your supervisor ever calls you and says, how did I not know about this? That's usually not a, that's usually not a good way to start a conversation, right? So think about it. If one of your customers um, is, is getting really upset, if you're in the service industry, or um, there's some product information that's incorrect that you, that you need to, to fix, or there's some inner office politics that, that are, that are going to end up affecting your boss. Well, if you suspect there's something that your boss needs to know, you know, get in front of it. And it's not about ratting people out because you never want to do that, right? You always want to go to the source first, but if you have information that's going to help you and the entire team, it's going to be great for you to get in front of that. So, you know, if with just a little bit more information, Amber, it's really going to help them be answered to their higher ups. And then it's going to make your job easier. <laughs> Yeah, but I think, Mo, I think there might be some listeners out there that are just like, you know what? I don't really want to tell my boss what's going <laughs> on. Or I've brought in this problem to him him or her before and, you know, they didn't seem to do anything about it. Or, um, you know, maybe it's just I'm, I'm tired of bringing this information when it doesn't seem like I'm getting the results that maybe necessarily I think should be happening. But honestly, we can't. We can't control what happens. The only thing we can tr control going back to point number one is our attitude. And that's really the only way that we can become the best leaders that we can be. Yeah. And and, and so something else that our leaders might want to think about um, is always have potential solutions ready for your boss. You know, if you're like me, you never want to go into a situation without having a potential solution to any problem that might present itself. Now, Amber, you know that that I love to think things through and think of all the situations for problems that are probably never even going to arise, right? Now, you don't have to go that far and be you know crazy like that, but you do have to have solutions ready for your boss. Never bring your boss a problem <laughs> without bringing him or her at least two or three potential solutions. That's always going to make you look in a bit, put you in a better light. And if your boss doesn't want to listen to you, well, then, you know, it, if they want to go another route, well, at least they heard you out and they know that, that you're trying to be productive and, and proactive. And so, you know, you at least show them that you've done the work. So, you know, let's say that there's gridlock in whatever area of work that you're at in, in, the, in your middle, you know, kind of middle management part of your company. Don't just walk into your boss's office and tell them that, you know, everything's going wrong and it's, you know, it's so-and-so and, you know, they need to do this or whatever. No, bring some solutions to the table and stay solutions focused. And by the time you bring that problem to your boss, you should have already exhausted all other options, meaning you should have already, we've talked about conflict management, right? You should have already tried to figure out conflict or figure out better ways to do it. I mean, you know, if you're in the customer service department, I talk with people first, right? And see what can be improved and ask how you can help, all that stuff. Then and only then, if something else fails, bring your boss into the process. And at that point, be very selective with, with, with what they need to know and keep it solutions focused. And so the bottom line is this. Do you want to be an asset to your boss? That's the question you need to ask yourself because you don't want to make them cringe every time <laughs> they think about you. You want to be the person where they know that they don't have to micromanage, that they know they can count on you to get things done and help them get their job done. and they should see you as the person that brings 
solutions to the table. Yeah. And maybe as the person who, you know, only brings the pertinent solutions to the table and not every single thing that you think needs to be fixed. (laughs) And here's all my solutions for it, because um, I can admit maybe I can be that way from time to time. (laughs) We all can. (laughs) So, yeah. So, Mo, what is the third and final point for our leaders today? The third and final point for today is this. Leaders lean towards the mundane tasks. And man, I don't think any of us want to hear this one, right? Because the third and final point goes hand in hand with the one that we just talked about. If you can learn to embrace the stuff that nobody else wants to do, including your boss, because there's that stuff, right? You're going to make yourself indispensable as an asset to the company. Now, if you work for a good company with a good culture of leadership, that'll probably be modeled to you by other people on your team and probably by your boss. They'll probably be the first one that's out, out in the front of the shop with, with a broom cleaning stuff up or whatever. But if not, you need to get in front of that. And so speaking of pushing, pushing brooms, um, in, in John Wooden's book, They Call Me Coach, um, he used to talk about how his basketball team, this is before he won his 10 championships in 12 years, they used to have basketball practice directly following the men's and women's gymnastics team practice. And they used the same stadium, which was not the now renowned Pauley Pavilion. It was the old rundown stadium. And you know who got out onto the floor between gymnastic practice and basketball practice to sweep the floors? It was John Wooden. John Wooden humbled himself, even though he was the coach of the team, The great he would become the greatest coach of all time, right? And he got out there. He did the mundane work that nobody, and that's why he did it. He could have asked somebody else to do it, right? He could have told one of his guys, hey, make a rotation, figure this out. But instead he said, no, I'm going to do this. I mean, talk about a servant, a servant leadership attitude. You know, leaders, are you that kind of person who does the stuff that others don't want to do? What is the stuff in your area, wherever you work right now, think about what's something that nobody wants to do. Maybe something as easy as taking out the the local trash, right? We all have our little waste baskets and then there's like a big trash can kind of in the, in, in the, the, the common area. And that thing just keeps piling and piling up and nobody wants to take it out. Maybe or just cleaning take- out the microwave in the break room. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was an office episode about that, right? <laughs> there was for sure. <laughs> yeah. We need to go back. And, we could do an entire, an entire leadership episode on that, but I'll tell you this. <laughs> There are a few things that a a supervisor will like more than somebody who gets the job done. They want somebody who gets the job done. And in John Maxwell's the 360 or the 360 degree leader, um, which is uh, the, the subtitle of that is developing your influence from anywhere in the organization. Maxwell says that no matter where you are on the totem pole, and we talk about the totem pole a lot here, you have to be ready to tackle whatever's thrown your way. And the best way to do this Maxwell says is to do it without question. Just get it done. Now, uh, now, of course, you know, um, it has to be within reason, right? You know, if your boss tells you to go, you know, wash your car or whatever, no, or wash it, wash his or her car. No, you're not supposed to do that. But if it's something that pertains to work in the team, yes, just get it done. Be a problem solver. And your boss is going to recognize this. And it's not about brown nosing or anything like that because you're helping the entire team. I'm not going to call somebody a brown noser who gets stuff done that I don't want to (laughs) do. I'm going to cheer them on and say, dude, you're doing a great job. But I also want to be that kind of person. I want to be a good team player, which brings me to this sub point. You know, wherever you are in your organization leaders, you have to do more than just manage other people and projects. You have to do more than just be in the process, right? And I love the process. Leaders work with people. That's what Maxwell says. Leaders are always around people. They want to be around people. And I think what people in general forget about is it's all about people, right? I mean, you're not working with robots here. You know, the the, the great thing about leadership is the people. The bad thing about leadership is the people. The people. <laughs> <laughs> right? We talk about that all the time, Amber. You know, every time, uh, you know, uh, uh, either of us will be talking, you know, you'll say, you'll start saying, Mo, but this person, that person. And I'll say, you know what? What Kevin used to say to me when I would say those same things, hey, you know, um, leadership will be great if we didn't have to deal with the people problem, right? <laughs> but it's what, it's what makes everything so great. Your people can be wonderful and they are wonderful. You just need to, to bring that, that, that incredible, one, incredible wonderfulness out of them. 
And every decision that you make is going to affect somebody else. Just remember that. That's why people are always getting upset, right? Because we live in a pretty selfish society and things that we do affect others. And we just sometimes don't care. And leaders, we have to be the ones that do care. So it starts to create dissension in a community when, when you put yourself first. But if you can put your, if you put others first, it's really going to change the culture. Yeah. And I think it's important to recognize that there are just some environments where even if you do the right thing, even if you're tackling the mundane tasks and you really are trying to think about others, sometimes even the right thing is going to create some conflict or dissension because that's just the nature of working with people, right? It really is. And I'll tell you this, if you want to become a rock star wherever you work, become the person who solves conflict between people. Go back and listen to our podcast regarding conflict management. I think it's the second time I've talked about it today. I mean, we, we barely scratched the surface with, with that one, but we did give a few ways that you can become a person who helps situations. And so people don't get hurt in the process in the long haul. And so remember, it's always about people. And as soon as you prove to your boss that you can move past the management part of the job and, and live in the leadership part of the job, they're going to see that and you're going to make yourself invaluable. Trust me. They're going to want to use you more and, and look to you more to get the big things done. Well, Mo, so leaders look at themselves first. Leaders lighten the load of others and leaders lean toward the mundane tasks. So before we go today, is there anything, any closing thoughts that you'd like to leave us with? I do. And, and of course, it always comes back to relationships, right? And, and it's no different with your boss. That is a relationship that, that you need to work on. People are not going to want to get along and, and use your ideas, uh, your solutions, whatever, if they don't have a chemistry with you. And of course, it's true you know, for your boss as well, right? I mean, you need to be able to have a good relationship with that person. And specifically what we're talking about today in what we call leading up, always be prepared when you're going to be talking with your boss. Time is our most precious commodity, our most precious commodity, and your boss only has a limited amount of time. So, you know, help help them get things done and help them do it quick. Do your due diligence to, to get those things done yourself. Put yourself in a position to have an intelligent conversation whenever you're given the opportunity to bring information to whatever your boss needs so that they can make a decision that's going to affect the company and you and your team in a positive way which of course makes their job easier and makes your job easier. And again, it's going to make you an indispensable part of the team. So remember, as John Wooden always says, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So don't be that person on the team. Be the person that your leader, your boss, your supervisor can look to confidently as a person who can make their life easier. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you everybody for joining us once again, and we look forward to seeing you next time.